<laughs> hey everybody, welcome to the podcast where we discuss important topics, mostly around tech. It's your host M, and we have your co-host Mars, Charles as well. Uh, and guys, I am seeing all these people retire on a tech salary. You know, I, I'm seeing, of course, people have been retiring using YouTube for a while, but I'm starting to see a lot of people retire on a tech salary. What, what's going on? I mean, it's 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 very uh, a lucrative field. So, you know, people aren't just going to school to be a doctor and uh, a lawyer anymore. There, there's retirement uh, capabilities within the tech field. So you got people working, what is it, 30 years? to retire yeah it's it's definitely possible within the tech field and, and i think it's um important to say that this is the pro one of the um professions where you don't need too much schooling um and you're able to make a substantial amount of money like doctors and lawyers you know you have to go through school you have to get those degrees but um tech there's a lot of opportunity for you without having those things not necessarily yeah, and then the the different type of packages that they offer, it's like almost like impossible for you to become well at these larger companies for you to become uh, successful. So, um, like with RSUs and uh, different grant types. Yeah, definitely with um, the package, the compensation package that a lot of people are seeing in tech, it just creates a way out almost. Uh, at these big companies, these big tech companies, these fang companies or fang man companies, as we've come to yeah, on that, the term. On that, it's the you don't even have to be in tech. It's just these tech companies. Like I yep. saw, there was some documentary on uh, Netflix I watched a while ago where a chef he started at um, Google. Like you know how they have like the cafe, and mm -hmm. um, he was offered stock options when they first started, and he was able to retire or he became a millionaire um, off of those stock options by just being a chef at Google. So. It's just these tech companies in general, um, the the pack, different packages they're offering. And then um, if you look at startups as well, mm. um, companies that are pre-IPO, that's that was like that's uh, a gold mine. Yeah, that was pre-pandemic. That was it was it, crazy. No, to this day, even I say even before the pandemic, during the pandemic and even now, if you can find yourself a unicorn startup, your employee 300, your pre-IPO. Um, and pre-IPO essentially just means your company is not public just yet, um, but it's in the process of becoming public. Um, so publicly traded in the stock stock market. And if you join and they give you 10,000 shares. Um, no, actually, let, let's give a ridiculous. Number. Let's say they give you what's a what's the average I've seen of shares that they might give you when you join an organization. I see like packages with 2,500 a year. So 2,500 shares. Yeah. Over a year that might be, um, or uh, they're usually, um, extended over three years. So, uh, like 7,500, 7,500 shares, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's say you have 7,000 shares, 10,000 shares and you go public and, and, and when you get them, uh, at, at the price you, at your cut in price is about, five dollars and then now when they go public you're at e each share is worth seventy dollars and it has potential of growth um even if you leave that organization as long as you've passed that vesting period you now achieve potentially great wealth um so that's why you see a lot of these job hoppers um who are looking for these startups to work at so they can get in early get in good um, and then leave and do it all over again because that is a method um, of of reaching that wealth. But then there is a lot of risk going into those startups too. Yep. Yeah. So what about like the regular Joe, like for a company, you know, a local company, tech company, do you think the oh, possibility boy. to still oh, boy, man. retire they off of a 401k, <laughs> you think it's still a possibility? Or, or At what? that point, it's, it's, it's more traditional. Um, mm -hmm. Do you... It, does the average person does the average person working in tech have a great chance of retiring early? I'd say no because you're you're just you're just getting a normal compensation. You might have like a annual bonus, um, maybe not even a sign on bonus in most cases. Um, you don't have any stock options, no RSUs. You might be able to purchase your 
in a company stock at a discounted price, but you know, that's not the same at all. Um, and then you have your regular base salary. So with that, that combination does not equate to retiring early unless, you know, you stay at home with your parents, which I am still seeing a lot um, in our generation. A lot of us are still at home up to the ages of 30 and beyond. So if you're living without having to pay a mortgage or rent or anything, um, just living below your means overall, I feel like, yes, it might be possible to retire early, but not <laughs> not not as early as uh some of the other people in tech you, you must have forgot you know so me and um used to work at the same place and there was one of our co-workers who um when i first started out i did not um put any uh contribution into my 401k plan um and he would get on to us you know yeah, yeah he would get on to us for that so um, there was one day, I guess he, he just got tired of it. He showed us his um, 401k plan. So he's been at this company for about 10, maybe 15 years. And he showed us um, just his 401k. And it was over a million, right? I believe so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but That's I feel crazy. like a million in, our, in the day in which we would need to mm -hmm. retire as young adults isn't going to go as far. So right. I feel like the achieving a million is is a po is definitely possible with the traditional 401k, but I feel like it's still going to be at that level. So even though the cost of living is going up, the amount in which you can get or achieve within a 401k within that time frame has is staying relatively the same. Um and because of that, it doesn't mean that we'd be able to retire on that. I mean you don't think it um you don't think it depends on how you might want to live after you retire i want to live comfortably <laughs> I, some people don't need that much you know i don't that. want to struggle i looked at my 401k i'm not even going to tell you J today i looked at my 401k it said if you retire today th this is how much you get a month <laughs> <laughs> and You'll no headed I, back to work i'm going to need what is it with government assistance if i were to write retire today i mean but that's that's out of the question i mean if you're under your th your 30s uh you shouldn't that shouldn't even be an expectation to True. to retire that early so the average but, joe in tech what mm -hmm. age are we looking at 65 <laughs> yeah at the I'm average like joe <laughs> the average joe in tech yeah would probably be around yeah 60 65 maybe mm -hmm. you know individuals like me and mars and you charles we've all gone into different organizations where we have been able to kind of get a little bit of the pie um so we haven't all just been stagnant in these traditional organizations um but for example the startup i was at i was looking to be set if we if we ipo then i, I was sold that dream but sadly, we sh we shut down. Mm -hmm. So I, I got n nothing. I got yeah. there was a transaction bonus, but that was pennies mm -hmm. um, in comparison to what I was gonna get if we were successful. But I was there for the risk. My manager, he's the one. Uh, he he worked at so many different places, like Git um, GitHub when it first opened. He worked mm -hmm. at Splunk when it first opened. So he was doing that. Uh, he's the one who even kind of uh, mentored me about the process of trying to get in good at early stage startups mm -hmm. and hope that they succeed. He worked at Apple more recently, but he was just there because he was unable to find the startup at the time. So when that's when my startup came in, um, the, well, the startup where I worked at came in the picture. He was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm leaving Apple. I'm, I'm getting paid a really good base salary here, but I want to gamble. <laughs> and he took the gamble and he lost but i lost too and i didn't take the gamble i was there because i wanted to be a part of something great but he, yeah. he knew the risk i didn't um but yeah it's just interesting how all that works yeah. what about your thoughts on maxing out like your 401k is that something that you would do when <laughs> right now i i don't recommend maxing out now that daggone i say max cust uh, um employee contribution yeah, yeah. That's, that's what it, and, I recommend. And that is it because it's possible. If you if you know you're just bad with investing and you don't want to think about it or deal with that, um, you rather it just be dealt with elsewhere, yes, okay, fine. Max out. 
But if you know there's going to be a possibility for you to invest in something on your own, it's not going to be good to have all of your money going into uh, 401k when you could potentially have greater return elsewhere. Right. Yeah, I still got bills, brother. <laughs> I still got bills. I got stuff I, you know, I need right now. I can't put all my money to the phone. He, he's, he's talking about 401k. <laughs> Brother, I got this credit card bill. You thought, yeah. <laughs> now, and and for those people who do have debt that they do need to pay off, prioritize that because the the rate of return that you're gonna get on your 401k, I guarantee, is not <laughs> greater than the rate that those banks are making charging you interest. Right. Mm-hmm. So definitely pay that down, get that out the way, um, and then once you're you're clear of debt, then you can start thinking about ways to invest. But on that, what about? Um you see, there's also um, the movement of, was it rage quitting or? Oh, quiet that, quitting. Mm, not, that's not it. Well, maybe, but during this time, um, do you think that is also related to maybe the, the compensation package that most of these um, people that worked in, in uh, tech were receiving to the point to where they were able to maybe take like six months sabbatical or, or quit for a while uh, before yes. returning back to work or maybe not even returning and doing their own thing and then starting their own um, entrepreneurship. Yeah. So that, I feel like that specifically affected software engineers or targeted so- software engineers. If you were a very talented senior software engineer, you were getting ex- extremely ridiculous offers, right? Um, so this is in the areas of machine learning, um, serious data science and of course just traditional software engineering mostly back end or full stack and so these software engineers were getting these big packages and they would only need to work for a year or two like we're talking five hundred thousand dollars a year total compensation six hundred eight hundred thousand dollars total comp and so they'll stay throughout the divesting period exit and do their own thing or just go relax or do whatever they want essentially um and that is probably not going to be existing going forward Mm -hmm. (laughs) because we're right now we're seeing a lot of layoffs companies are seeing that that feature race that race where everybody was trying to add new features as much as possible have Mm -hmm. big teams to work they thought the more engineers they had the better their products would be uh but that did not translate over um profits did not increase so now we're seeing a lot of layoffs before we continue on i do want to talk about burnout because that's such a big topic uh working in tech not even just tech a lot of different sectors um being a young professional i don't know if it's because we're exposed to social media we see all these people doing all these things um, and that makes us start thinking, oh, maybe I should start my business. I'm just tired of working for the man or whatever it is. What are your thoughts on burnout, Charles? You know, I think burnout, it got a lot worse um, when, you know, the pandemic hit and then everybody's back at home. Mm. When you were in the office, you were able to kind of break away a little easier at the end of the, you know, the work day, come home, chill, and then get back into the office the following day. But now... Um, when you're at home with all your stuff, you tend to work longer hours, you know, work earlier, work later. So it's easier for you to get, you know, burnt out. You have to be intentional about it when you're working from home, um, yeah. because like when you work from the office, you have that differentiator of this is my office. This is my house. Like I don't work for my house or like when I used to work in the office, once I'm in my car on my way home, I'm not checking Slack on my way home. I'm not um, checking emails. It's like when once I get home, work is done. But um, when you look at the aspect from working from home, it's it's hard to kind of cut that off as soon as you know you hit the out the the end of uh, your business hours, like 5 p.m. to switch gears to basically stop working. But I feel like companies after I mean, it's been two years now since the the whole uh, migration or the shift to to working from home. So I feel like companies have shifted to adjust to that. Uh, Like some companies offer away days or they do group um, or company wide um, days off. So um, like wellness days. Yeah, exactly. Those are great. Earlier when I was working in tech, there was no such thing as the whole company being off for a whole week. Like 
even during the holidays, like if you want Christmas off or if you want um, different holidays off, you request that off. There was no such thing as the whole company being off during that time. So um, I feel like they've tried to compensate that that um, aspect of, of being uh, well working from home. Right. Yeah. And so the introduction of different things like wellness days, these bigger breaks, um, I feel like for Gen Zers and millennials, um, the impact that we saw when, you know, coming from school where we always had winter break, spring break, and we're coming to work where, <laughs> yeah, every once in a while you'll get off. That kind of shook a lot of us. Um, yeah. And so a lot of these modern companies, they started introducing things like winter break, spring break, where the entire company has a week off or even wellness days. And so now during a wellness day, um, they, they ask, what's the benefit of having a day where people just relax? Or when What's the difference between just taking a day off? Taking a day off, you're still, you still you still know in the back of your mind that things are still going on. So you can't really focus on enjoying yourself. But now on a wellness day, um, everybody's out. So right. no, nothing's going on without you. You're not going to come back to a whole bunch of emails again because everybody is enjoying their wellness day. Right. Same thing for these large winter breaks, spring breaks, summer hours, all of this introduction. And now they're even talking about potentially moving to a four day work week. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. So that, you know, I don't know what that translates to or what mm-hmm. that is going to look like. Um, but I would love that. I'm yeah, for it. They, they already do it in um, like European countries. Like mm-hmm. I think in Paris, uh, France, um, it's very common over there. So it's just really the U.S. where we haven't adopted to that, and, that type and, of culture. And with that, we're talking about a four day work week without working extra hours on those four days that you're working. So sometimes oh, people offer I haven't you. heard that. I heard, <laughs> yeah. I heard it was like if you do like the four day work week, you work yeah. 10. Yeah. So you're still talking about like 40 hour work weeks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, they're talking about completely removing eight hours away from that. Um, and that is the niche. And so, uh, some companies in, uh, a lot of these European countries have started, um, taking initiative on that. And even some companies here in the United States are trying to get that rolling. But again, logistically, I don't know how that works out. So, but I guess we'll, we'll see. I mean, back on the topic of burnout, um, what are some tips that you would have with anybody feeling that right now or in the space that they're working in? Oh, that reminded me, Charles. Uh, I I kind of don't fall into the traditional work life balance group. What does that mean? Uh, because I, uh, years ago, I read this article, and and a lot of people who know me, they they hear me always talk about the work life blend, being able to gracefully, <laughs> being able to gracefully blend your work and your life to a way that suits you. So you're not necessarily. A fear of people with work who, who who strive for work-life balance is they want their work to be one place, their life to be one place, and they don't want those two things to interact. Yeah. But I, in the work-life blend, I welcome that, and I... <laughs> work all day and night? No, see, that's the thing. Organizations that offer a flexible work schedule, um, I feel like that's suitable for that, but where there are uh, positions where you just have to work straight, yes, you definitely need that balance being able to separate that but organizations that welcome flexibility as long as you're getting your work done you're working your hours um i feel like a work-life blend kind of ends up working and you're, you're able to now it's, it's your norm right yeah that, that's your day get used to uh, it and, until this weekend then nothing nothing should touch your weekend yeah, <laughs> yeah i don't know how i feel about that <laughs> So with that, Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it comes with the benefit, but you got to look at the other side. Like with that, it's like you're expected to work all the hours of the day. Yeah. Which I don't know. I I think for me personally, I'd prefer like a set business hours. Like if I'm not expected to respond to you during these hours, like that should be an expectation. Oh, let me ask you this then. Could you spend a whole day doing nothing? (laughs) (laughs) very very easily (laughs) like but don't when did you feel like drained doing nothing i don't know if it's just me no (laughs) 
I'll feel I, relaxed. I feel like if if I do absolutely nothing for days on, yeah, yeah, let's After say a, a week. While. Could you go a week straight of doing nothing? No. no, exactly. Could you do a week straight of working? No, no. exactly. So I feel like those. What are what are the two things missing in each scenario? It's either working or doing nothing. But if you mix those together, you know. I so, guess. If you look at it, I mean, does, okay, so does that? Said, oh, I guess. Does that if, only, if that's how they brainwash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, does that only work when um, you're working? You're, you're kind of like the only one working after hours. Because if you have people reaching out to you at 6 p.m., 7 p.m., then you're not having a good time. But right. if you, you know take control of what you're actually working on nobody's reaching out to you and you can dedicate some time mm. after hours to work by yourself yeah then i would agree with that yeah mm -hmm. true yeah because during the day you're trying to work on your projects but then you might have people reaching out for support on different items right um and that again you know i guess yeah i also guess get where you're coming from from your your lifestyle but like if you look at somebody who has like a family and other responsibilities yeah. it's like you need because yeah. you can't blend them uh, into your work yeah 100 percent so. agree with that yeah. yes at least i haven't i don't know how to do that yet <laughs> <laughs> but it, i'll figure out if it's possible yeah. <laughs> but yeah in in regards to burnout personally how has do you, do you guys feel like you guys have been burned out getting burned out there's there's only one time in my life where i've ever been burnt out and that was um, for this one company I worked for, um, I was the main uh, DevOps engineer guy there oh, for the specific application teams I worked on. So when we started, there was three different applications that we I, I was responsible for uh, building out their CI/CD pipelines. And they ramped up uh, beta for three more applications, and I was responsible for that. And then <laughs> they wanted to ramp up another three. So at this point, I was responsible for six just me and then they wanted to put six more on me so and you had to manage the full deployment of yeah those. Okay. yeah because the the i guess the, the the knowledge of the rest of the team it wasn't quite on that i guess that level yet mm -hmm. um so that's why they really depended on me um in order to do that and uh it was also a global company so i had people reaching out out to me on all at all types of hours like in the middle of the night, we had we had uh, some people working from Italy, some people in Asia that I work with. So they, I mean, they didn't expect you to respond like whenever they, because they, I mean, when you work for a global company, everybody has an expectation that you'll work once you get online. Mm -hmm. uh, but just the, that notification, getting that notification at, at that type of, at that time of day, it can definitely um, put some stress on you. So yeah. um, that was happening constantly. So uh, yeah, I got burnt out, burnt out from that and then ended up leaving that company. Yeah, I remember that time you were working some ridiculous hours. Right. Charles, what about you? You experienced burnout? I sure did. Working for this company and having majority of the staff leave. So it left... Um, left all the work to pretty much just me and it was at a time where i was fairly new um so i didn't have 100 percent grasp of all the concepts of my role so you know i'm spending all day kind of um, putting the pressure on me and then having to spend after hours learning and trying to figure out the different process that i'm dealing with on a day-to-day -day. and it was a lot yeah on that like when you think about layoffs, like layoffs don't scare me. What scares me is <laughs> the work that will double yeah. <laughs> after layoffs. Like if I get laid off, I get laid off. But if I don't get laid off and then they're like doubling the work that I have to do, I'm taking the, the work of the people that got laid off. Mm -hmm. That's like that's what what kind of worries me um, versus the actual layoffs that are current currently happening. Okay. Yeah, um, I feel like true burnout is the last time I felt true burnout was probably when I was in college. <laughs> Believe it or not, when I was in a one of my cybersecurity courses and there was just so much work in that course. And a lot of people were reaching out on GroupMe. We had different assignments and whenever somebody reached out, it looked like it was bad news. I got PTSD <laughs> from, from, from those GroupMe notifications. To this day, when I hear it, I, get, I, I shake a little bit. <laughs> but when it comes to burnout in the workforce, 
Um, I may have felt minor burnout uh, that, you know, probably just needed a, a, a break, like a vacation, come back. But true burnout, I feel like you, it, it's a formula for a true burnout. You need two things. You need to have options and you need to not have bills. If you have those two <laughs> things, then yes, you get burned out just fine. But if you don't have those two things, you will not feel no burnout. Imagine those people who aren't in tech, but just working a whole bunch of those jobs. Like, oh, mm-hmm. they got they got bills to pay. Mm-hmm. They're not worried about no burnout. <laughs> exactly. They, they worried about not having a job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see you having true burnout without having those ava- options available to you. Yeah. True. Sure. I feel like now would be a good time to transition into diversity in the workspace um, because that's been such a, a big thing that we've been hearing. Uh, we see on every employer's um, career page. What are your thoughts on um, diversity, Mars? Oh, man. So I guess I'll talk like kind of from when I first started in tech. Uh, I was like moving up uh from uh the support roles that i started at like when i actually got into engineer role um i was the only minority on the team and i didn't feel any different than anybody else to be honest you know what's crazy now that Mara said that when we were in those we we started off in entry-level positions and when we're in those entry-level positions there are a lot of minorities there as we moved up it gets it it gets it thins out it it gets wider and wider and you know (laughs) the people we've worked with they were all great people they taught us a lot you know we learned a lot from them so not nothing against those people who worked there they were they were definitely talented individuals but that is something that i noticed i would say like whenever i walk in a room or whenever i am introduced into a group of people where i have to speak or talk on something that i am supposed to be a, a, a SME on I, subject matter expert yeah expert subject matter expert. <laughs> i honestly can tell you like i do not feel like oh man they they're looking at me and i'm i'm they look at me as a minority and uh i have to prove myself to them like i just get in there and i I'm with confidence and um say what i have to say and remove that um, veil. I feel like I'm a little different. I agree to mm-hmm. the point where I'm able to, um, I, I feel comfortable in these rooms with, where I might be the only person representing my demographic. But I will say I always do feel like I have something to prove. I feel like I got to yeah. put on for my people, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, just represent like, oh, let's say there is somebody who thinks like, oh, man, what's this, what's this kid capable of? And, and it's not just me being black, but also me being younger i would say yeah it's more of me being young than it is my my race what i I would say like i always feel like um it's always a thing like what is this this i'm always the youngest guy on the team i was the the minority the only black guy the the Mm -hmm. youngest youngest guy on the team so i feel like i i get more of that young thing than Mm -hmm. i do um it being my race but yeah yeah because when people see you doing that good work and then they see you (laughs) they're like oh man this guy knows a lot because when it Mm. comes to engineering you can easily separate those who actually know what they're doing versus Mm -hmm. those who have kind of just got lucky along the way and you know knew the right people and so when they see you putting in that work that effort you know you get that respect and that's Mm -hmm. one thing i like about tech and i don't know if that's everywhere but at least for the places i've been it's all about who is the most knowledgeable or yeah. willing to learn or uh, who can learn fast. So um, do you feel like diversity, equity, inclusion should, should focus more on ageism versus race or um, is ageism not a thing no, I, in I the feel workforce? Like ageism, though, affects from the other side as well. So when mm-hmm. you start getting old, they're like, oh, man, we, I don't know, especially when it comes to the hiring process. When you want to when you want to start this new fresh team yeah. and then now you have this 50 year old person who applied, I don't feel like they get the same level of what's the word pushback. Uh, I don't even know if I'd even say pushback. I just don't feel like they get the same scope that someone who's younger is because you want a team like, oh, I can go out with I could be cool with these people, especially if you're mm-hmm. a younger manager. I see that a lot where they might go over somebody. But whereas me. 
I've worked with older people in the past and I've learned a lot from them. And I feel like there's still a lot more to learn um, before, you know, they start exiting the workforce. Mm -hmm. Um, But I feel like sometimes they don't get the same attention as younger people. Um, Women in in, in tech, I don't see a lot. I'm seeing more and more, especially with program management, um, Mm -hmm. product management and project management. Um, But in regards to actually engineering, um, I'm not seeing too much. What has been your experience, Charles? So it's a little different for me now. I'm a lot more comfortable being in these spaces. But before, like interviewing, because, you know, I had lock when I was first entering the workspace. So I was a little apprehensive on going to these interviews with, with my locks and braids and long hair, because I always heard in the past, like interviewees um, or interviewers would always pass judgment on, mm-hmm. you know, that type of hairstyle. So but once I actually got these positions and got these roles and was doing an exceptional job i realized it didn't really matter you know like you guys said as long as you're doing the work and as long as you're doing good it mm-hmm. shouldn't it shouldn't matter what yeah you know, how you look and quick tip on that one thing i always did when interviewing uh different companies is um asking the recruiter which some of them are almost are automatically already do this um send you their the linkedin of the people who are interviewing you um, and I would go to their LinkedIn and look at, mm. I would scroll down and look at what was their first position. So I would always do, I would do that to kind of put them in my shoes or maybe they were, they were in your shoes at one point. So, yeah. um, you shouldn't look at them as, as anything to be intimidated by. And that's just, uh, always helped me, um, get by in interviews is that's, that's one thing I would always do is look at what was the position that they first started off. So um, and that put it really that really put things in perspective to me because um, I always would see like they started off as software engineer or they started off as customer support. So um, and I would hone in on that to be able to say, OK, I'm at this same position that they were at two years ago or three years ago or five years ago or whatever. And um, that that would, would be one thing to help me to get through interviews. I feel like, again, when it comes to what, what was the acronym for it? Diversity, equity and DEI. DEI. Yes. Uh, I don't know exactly how much that did. I'm sure it did a lot. Um, I don't know if it had any adverse effects. Um, So let's say someone was being interviewed and they were white and they were uh, a little bit more qualified than a black person, but they were not selected because the the team needed a little bit more diversity. Personally, I don't think that would be cool, especially Mm -hmm. if they were a lot more qualified. But yeah, I I definitely understand where what's that what what they're trying to do with that. Seeing people for people. Right. So like I was talking about older people, like you're not going to it's it's basically not discriminating against someone for anything. Right. Mm -hmm. You just you're hiring them for this position. Your team has this culture. Do they meet both of those requirements? Do do are are they technically inclined for a tech role? Um, and again, are they are they chill? Do they match the vibe of the team? If they do, it should not matter what they look like exactly. or how old they are. Mm-hmm. Um, they 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 should be uh, pulled in. Yeah, but on the other hand of that, like sometimes I'm <laughs> I'm just here to do a job. Like I don't want <laughs> to get to know you people. I don't want to, you know. We don't have to to get along. We don't have to be on the That's same. That's the team you need to look for. Then <laughs> you need to look for them team where they like. Some hey, of man. these people are really like nerds. Like like you for <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah 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 nah. Like you, <laughs> man. These they, they be like, hey man, we looking for friends here. Now Mars want a place where hey, we don't turn on no webcams. We don't do nothing. We just get our we we look down, get our work done. I mean, sometimes yes, I would prefer that than, than <laughs> team building extra. Like no, I'm, yeah. I'm just here to get the job done. Yeah, I'm here to get the job done. I Same want cool thing. people who are all doing good work and they're mm-hmm. friendly to reach out to. But I do not need someone who is going to be my best pal. Yeah, you know, uh, if that does happen, because I've met, we've we've met a lot of cool people in the workplace. You mm-hmm. know, that, that's people who we still are connected to to this very day. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, with all of this being said, this might be jumping to a, a different sub. This is going to be our last topic, but. W- you know, when you look back, you watch something like The Office, you saw them grow together. They were with each other for years. Mm-hmm. They had that traditional work experience, not experience, but the, um, I, I don't know the word for it, but culture. Yeah, not even culture, but you know, in the past, 
you used to grow these bonds. Everybody had their desk. Everybody knew each other, knew about each other's families. We'd go out for drinks after work. Mm -hmm. um, so that old work culture that is kind of vanishing um, because of things like work from home, hybrid workspace. Right. Um, do you think we're going to miss out greatly on that if you know we tra if we continue to go down this path of work from home, or do you, like does that bother you? Is what I'm asking you, or do you not care? You you want to work from home? <laughs> I don't I don't really care. To be <laughs> I have my own friends, you know, that I grew up with. I don't need to make more at work, and you know, I, I don't, don't know. think it's a good idea to blend that. I would say on the the aspect of connections. So when I was at a company where we did work in the office, I was able to make connections with different teams. And that's that's kind of how I moved up um, by Facts. making different connections and networking. But I would say this one company I worked at since I've been remote, I have not not reached out to one team outside of the team that I work with um, since I started. And I haven't really been able to make those those networking connections to mm -hmm. if I wanted to branch out to a different team, that opportunity is not there today because I don't know anybody than the, the people that I work with. Um, or if I were to leave and wanted to come back, but maybe I want to come back on another team, that opportunity is not there because I didn't make any connections um, because of the, the, I mean, when you're on in the office, you don't even have to work with that different team to know right. these different people. Yeah, you, you just, just see run into every, them yeah. mm -hmm. like, yeah, making coffee of, in the morning exactly. or something like that. Everyone so, yeah. you see that for, and that literally was what we did, like how mm -hmm. we, how we entered the workforce. That That's why I feel like it, it is cool every once in a while for your organization to bring you all in. You get to see each other, know each other. And then that way, when you go back, you're like, oh, man, this is Brian. That, that dude was cool. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, so I, I'm a biggest advocate from work from home. Um, I'm not saying we need to go back to the office for anything, but I do say that it is important to have these team building. Yeah. Um, I would say, like, in a perfect world, like, remote work, but, like, maybe, like, a once a month team event um like if you're once a quarter <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, Se semi-annually <laughs> <laughs> like maybe if your uh, um company is based out of uh, la or san francisco or new york whatever um they pay for your ticket to fly like i'm all for that like yeah maybe once a quarter close down game. those big businesses those big offices yep. and save that money so you can fly everybody out <laughs> fly us all out and, and when they include a plus one that is the best mm -hmm. um and you especially for those holiday parties you can include mm -hmm. your significant other and they get to see exactly what you've been doing except from you just being at home on the computer all day oh you know he doesn't do anything he's just yeah. typing away mm -hmm. um so that would be cool but anyway um, we appreciate you guys for tuning in to the episode of the podcast. We have, of course, some great content coming. We, we plan to start inviting people, not just within tech, uh, but, you know, of course, our focus is in tech. Uh, but, yeah, be on the lookout for a lot of the content we have coming up. Thanks for tuning in. Just here to have great conversations. Wait, Mars. Yeah. When's our next video coming out, man? You got to ask the right person. Oh man, yeah. So if if you guys wonder uh, what's going on with the content, y'all blame Charles for that one. <laughs> um, you know there there was a little bit of technical difficulties, but um, a brand new video. That means you got to drop this soon. before he drops his video. Yeah, it's a race now. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, make sure y'all follow us on IG if you haven't already at Push the Prod. We'll uh, leave that in the description. Yes, Thanks sir. again for watching and tune in on the next episode. Peace. Peace.